Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. I'm kind of a serious guy, I take after my father. But as I look at uh, the numbers of people who read my stuff or watch my videos, people seem to like my humorous ones. So I thought I would put together for this podcast a series, of maybe a half to 20 minutes worth of uh, um, my attempted humor. The first is this little series of uh, people going to confession. The first one is called Donald Trump Goes to Confession. This is Donald Trump here. One of my girlfriends convinced me to go to confession by getting me to believe I'd feel even more powerful after I got a priest's absolution. It didn't turn out that way. I said, Father, I've sinned, I guess. You have. I recognize your voice. Yeah, yeah, I know I didn't win the election, but what did I have to lose by trying to overturn it? You lost millions in lawyer fees, and the country lost belief in any of your policies, even popular ones like immigration. You're supposed to be a fucking priest, not a Democrat. I'm human. Please forgive me. You're fired. Just joking. Even though you are a priest, you do remember my TV show, The Apprentice. I remember. Okay, uh, I'd like you to forgive. God forgives, uh, not me. I don't think I'm God, unlike some people. Stop it! All right, I gotta calm down. It couldn't hurt for God to forgive me for undervaluing my properties. They're worth $3 billion and I only reported $2 billion. But what's a billion? No biggie. Everyone cheats on their taxes. Actually, I'm not a priest. I'm with the IRS. You're under arrest. Once again. Just joking. Turnabout's fair play. Listen, dude, I was a fucking great president. Jobless claims hit a 50-year low. I wasn't going to let the U.S. be a patsy for that leftist United Nations in hell. I even got the Abraham Accords, peace in the Middle East. What's Biden done? Release billions to Iran, which means fund the Hamas. Exploding war in the Middle East, maybe even starting World War III. Even though the media paints me as the worst president and CNN still won't stop, I was the best. Your hubris, your behavior, and your disrespect for the American people requires penance that goes well beyond a few Our Fathers and Hail Marys. I am going to recommend to the Vatican that you be excommunicated. I'm no Catholic asshole. If I could, I would say, you are fired. Anyway, that one is called Donald Trump Goes to Confession. In fairness, now here is Joe Biden Goes to Confession. Privately, I've screwed up a lot, so I, I, I figure as a good Catholic boy, Oops, I'm not a boy. I'm I'm 80, or is it 81? Or, uh, 82, I don't know. That's not until next week. That's November. November 1? I, I don't know. Anyway, as a good Catholic boy, a Catholic good old boy, or I guess good Catholic old fart, <laughs> I thought a trip to the confessional was way overdue. It was like no confession I had ever been to before. Uh, this is what happened, at least, uh, as my lawyer tells me to say, to the best of my recollection. First, I guess, if I'm being honest, i got to tell you, I got lost just finding the confessional. Thank God for my handlers. They literally handled me to the priest. Or was it a cardinal? A bishop? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, I said to the priest, uh, this is all confidential, right? Yes, my son. I said, notice I'm drooling. I'm only 81, but a little drool, that doesn't affect my ability to be president. Uh, I, uh, I really could use my teleprompter now. Well, okay, uh, uh, I need to ask forgiveness for uh, the Biden syndicate. Can I ask for absolution on behalf of them all? You know, James and Holly and, of course, what's his name? Oh, Hunter. And oh, and, and me. Oh, and all our launderers. No, 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 I don't mean the Chinese laundry. Or, or is that a microaggression? Are you sorry for your sins? Well, I, I guess I'm supposed to be honest in here, especially because it's confidential. I am a little sorry, I guess, but mainly because they're investigating us and we may not be able to continue running our little business. Well, maybe it's not such a little business. Or almost as bad, it could cost me my re-election. If I might ask you, you'd be 82 by the time you took office again. Is the God within you confident enough to ask 100 million people to say that you're the best person in the United States to be the leader of the greatest power in the world? What? Did I get a Republican priest? Archbishop, 
I'm an archbishop. You're right, I'm being biased. I guess I've been watching too much Fox. Anything else you wish to confess? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, uh, releasing the billions to Iran. Do you think I started World War III? Oh, oh, and the border. I think I want open borders, or at least the loudest Democrats want it. I'm not sure what I want, so I'm, I've caved. Even though I'm scared of how much it'll cost, I'm scared of the crime. I'm scared of the message we're sending to the millions who came here without breaking the law and the millions of young people who see they can get what they want by breaking the law. Hey, see, I don't need a teleprompter. Okay, let's get down to business. Will you give me absolution, Cardinal? I'm an archbishop. Anyway, sure. Just give me five Our Fathers, five Hail Marys, and say this line from the Bible a hundred times, but say it with expression, not like the monotone way you say the Pledge of Allegiance. Say it like this. Better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than a rich man who is crooked. Thank you, Bishop. Archbishop. Archbishop. Anyway, that um, is Joe Biden goes to confession. Next, we have a dog goes to confession. <clears throat> I was so sorry. My owner, actually I prefer the term caretaker, took me to visit his friend. But she had a dog, not just any dog, one I felt threatened by. So to establish territoriality, just a bit of territoriality, really, I peed on her sofa. My bad luck, it was white fabric and not some junky sofa, not even Ikea. It was one of those expensive sofas from Fru Fru Furniture. My caretaker yelled, no, but it was too late. I felt so bad that he yelled at me. He rarely does. I try to be a good doggy. Really, I do. I felt so bad that I decided to go to confession, and this is what happened there. Father, I have sinned. Talk to me, my child. I mean, my pup. And I explained what I had done. The priest said, you sprinkled unholy water on a sofa, an expensive sofa? Dogs don't know expensive from cheap. True, but you do know not to pee in the house. It wasn't my house. I was just trying to... Would you pee in God's house, this church? No, of course not. Okay, then. Five Our Fathers, five Hail Marys, plus a prayer to St. Francis, the patron saint of animals. And in any house, thou shalt pee no more. Right. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> okay, that's what I was called. The dog goes to confession. This one is called The Slug Goes to Confession. My parents went beyond threatening. They actually kicked me out of the house. I was pissed, but even more pissed at having to live in a welfare hotel. So I begged my parents to give me one more chance, even though they've already given me umpteen one more chances. You know what got them to say yes? I hated to do it, but it was time for the nuclear option. I told them I would start going to church again. And what sealed the deal was when I told them I'd go to confession and tell the priest what a slug I had been. And this is how it went down. Father, I have sinned. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I'm like way guilty of one of the seven deadlies. Uh-huh. Sloth. I'm practically three-toed. I like your sense of humor, and more important, your Christian modesty. Well, you may not like me so much when I fill you in. I see. You see, even though my parents sprung for college, all of it, $149,000 in student loans alone, and I did graduate, although it did take me six and a half years. Since then, I haven't earned enough to pay even half the monthly payment I promised my parents I'd pay. I am so not able to pay. Do you need to declare bankruptcy? Student loans are the only loans you can't. Maybe the higher education lobby waived enough dollars in front of the right candidates. Well... The unemployment rate is at a 50-year low. I assume you have a job. Uh, yeah. And with a college degree, don't you make enough to pay your student loan? I'm a window washer, part-time. Have you looked for a better paying job? I have to be honest, right? I mean, this is church. If I lie here, it's especially bad. Like, God will be more inclined to send me downstairs to burn in for eternity. God is merciful. What would God say is your vocation? I thought about it a while, but couldn't come up with a thing. Well, 
I had to come up with something. I can't believe what I said. I think I was meant to be a slug. No one is meant to be a slug. The only thing I aspire to is quitting my job and getting 100% on welfare. I can give you absolution for anything, even that. Is that what you want? I don't know. Again, I couldn't think of anything to say, so I said, probably trying to please him, maybe I want to be a priest. Maybe I have the calling. Well, that's a start. So let's make your penance five Hail Marys, five Our Fathers, and recite Ecclesiastes 10.18 a hundred times with expression. Not like you're saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Through sloth, the roof sinks in. And through indolence, the house leaks. I walked out of there still thinking, I'm meant to be a slug. Okay. Um, next is called a... Uh, let's see, what did I do here? Did I screw up? I did. <sighs> okay, I have to skip that one. I was going to do a vegan uh, uh, who craves Burger King, but it's not here. So... Oh, there it is. Okay. I used to eat meat. Indeed, I was a corn-fed, beef-chomping Nebraskan. Then I saw the light. Even if meat weren't an environmental nightmare, how could we eat cow? So I went whole <coughs> hog, straight past vegetarian, to the holy happy meals of veganism. I even joined an all-vegan house we could cook collectively. I'm the perfect vegan for 20 of the week's 21 meals. Every Sunday, I tell my roommates that I'm off the whole paycheck to get the usual, you know, like tofu, kale, and quinoa. That was the truth. I just didn't tell him about the teensy-weensy stop I make on the way at Burger King. You see, I can't stay with bird food without knowing that once a week I can enjoy a juicy, flame-broiled, bacon, double cheeseburger deluxe, oh, the patty, slightly crispy on bite, and then juice enriching it, and oh, oh, the melted cheese, and la piste de resistance, the bacon. Lots of bacon. I make sure to wipe any grease from my face, do my politically correct shopping at Whole Foods, and then blasé, return home, unpack my homage to the green goddess, and today I asked if for Thanksgiving they would like me to make a stew of bulgur, soy-based imitation turkey, and mixed root vegetables. They shrugged. <clears throat> All right, that one um, is called The Vegan uh, Who Craves Burger King. Next one is called Jokester Janitor. It wasn't that I was dumb. <clears throat> it was when I heard of someone with a PhD who had to drive from college to college in the usual strangling traffic in what he called my brainwashing buggy to teach just one class per college to cobble together $40,000 a year and no benefits. At the same time, I heard that the city was hiring janitors at 62000 to start with tons of benefits. I'm not status conscious. I just wanted to make enough to move out of my crazy parents' house, so I applied. I'm not happy as a janitor, but it isn't why people think. It's not boring. It's actually fun seeing executives' offices, what's on their walls, their bookshelves, and when they're not there, the paper's on their desk. It's fun to see what they're working on. I get to see government bureaucracy up close without being a victim of it. The problem is that in certain neighborhoods, some kids, even an occasional adult, gives us hell. As bad, at parties, saying I'm a janitor, let alone for the city, is a conversation stopper. But I'm golden handcuffed, the good pay, lots of holidays and vacation days, health insurance, even a pension. Thank you, taxpayer. So I can't quit. But could I add some spice to my life? So I googled how to be a stand-up comedian, and soon I was doing open mic nights as the jokester janitor. That is provided the spice and at parties when they ask what I do, I can say I'm a stand-up comedian. That's a conversation starter. When they ask if I can do a bit for them, I oblige. For example, I was looking for a new janitor job and was late for my job interview. I overswept. A few of my janitor friends formed a band, the Bleach Boys. When I got sick of being a janitor, I tried to get into NASCAR, but they rejected me because my car went broom, broom. So I got a job as a garbage man, but I was worried that there were no training. The boss said, you'll pick it up as you go. Now, how rich am I? Filthy rich. Anyway, that story is called Jokester Janitor. Next is Fantasy Traffic School. I got stopped by the highway patrol. Do you know how fast you were going? 
No, sir. You were doing 77 and a 65. But I'll give you a break. I'll write you up for just 75 and a 65. I thought you should be nominated for sainthood, but instead just ask how much it'll be. You'll be notified by mail. I put my head down and sighed. It came in the mail, all right, $515. Or if I want to go to traffic school, a mere $380, plus the traffic school's $99 fee. That's almost 500 bucks. But then it doesn't go on your record, so my insurance wouldn't go up. I picked Carload of Laughs Traffic School, and I'm glad I did. You're going to see why. I didn't think it would be a good choice. I showed up there, and there were a couple of other dozen violators, and an instructor who looked like he'd rather have a root canal. He mumbled, okay, six hours and 45 minutes, you'll get your certificate. Let's get started. Your car must be how many feet behind a stopped school bus? An eager beaver raised her hand. 20 feet? <coughs> Far enough you can't hear the kids farting. Just kidding. You're right, 20 feet. How does a cop know you've run a stop sign? We were quick, learner from the eager, quick learners from the eager beaver's experience, and none of us raised our hand. Then he said, you've run a stop sign if you jog past it. Only one person even bothered to groan. He said, just kidding. Cop sees if your wheels have completely stopped turning. Why shouldn't you speed? Because you might get caught. 500 bucks ka -ching. Seriously, you know why it's wrong to speed. After 45 minutes of this, he said, Let's take our first break. He seemed the most eager one to get out of the classroom. After a minute of commiseration with my fellow lawbreakers, I too wanted out of the stuffy room, so I wandered outside. Instead of hanging out with some fellow scholars in front of the building, I moped to the back. It's fun to see what we're not supposed to see, usually stuff like used oil from a restaurant or broken crockery from a houseplant store, but this time I struck gold. There was our burnout instructor smoking a joint. Manna from heaven. As soon as he saw it, he flung the joint away. I sauntered over, picked it up, smelled it to confirm, and said, Hmm, you needed a little something to try to make you funny? He said, Please don't tell anyone. I strutted back to the torture chamber, I mean classroom, where most of my fellow students were hanging out. I told them what I saw. When the instructor returned, he acted like nothing bad happened, but I was not going to let that happen. I said, so, Mr. Instructor, I understand you've decided to end the course right now and give us all our certificate of completion. He said, huh? Whereupon I started chanting, weed, 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 certificate, 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 weed, 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 certificate, certificate, certificate. And the attendees joined the chorus. The final nail in the instructor's coffin was when I said, now. You don't want me to go to your company and tell them about your weedy, weedy stoner break, do you? Like our tickets, it would go on your record, and that would cost more than a hike in your insurance. From the paper bag on the floor next to his desk, the instructor grabbed the stack of certificates, slammed it onto his desk, and swayed out. As soon as I got back in my car, I patted my certificate and made a point of, after checking for cops, rolling through a stop sign. My wheels definitely were turning. Ah. Anyway, that's called fantasy traffic school. Oh. <coughs> I'm going to end with um, two. One is Woody Allen one-liners. These Woody Allen statements are, or jokes are from the Yale Book of Quotations. A fast word about oral contraception. I asked a girl to go to bed with me, and she said no. I hate the beach. I hate the sun. I'm pale and I'm redheaded. I don't tan. I stroke. I was so touched by her that after 15 minutes I wanted to marry her, and after a half hour I completely gave up the idea of snatching her purse. Sex and death. Two things that come once in a lifetime. But at least after death you're not nauseous. The lion and the calf shall lie down together, but the calf won't get much sleep. If it turns out there's a God, I don't think he's evil. The worst you can say about him is that he's an underachiever. It's not that I'm afraid to die. I just don't want to be there when it happens. Why does a man kill? He kills for food, and not only for food. Frequently, there must be a beverage. Life is full of loneliness, suffering, and unhappiness, and it's all over much too quickly. On Los Angeles, I don't want to live in a city where the only cultural advantage you can make a right turn on a red light. Some guy hit my fender, and I said unto him, Be fruitful and multiply. 
but not in those words. I would have killed myself, but I was in analysis with a strict Freudian, and if you kill yourself, they make you pay for the sessions you miss. Hey, don't knock masturbation. It's sex with someone I love. The most beautiful words in the English language are not I love you, they're it's benign. I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve it through not dying. And finally, a contest between Woody Allen, Joan Rivers, and Wanda Sykes, who's funniest. Allen starts, I'm funnier than you than the two of you put together. Sykes and Rivers said, we'll show you. Allen says, okay, let's go. When I was kidnapped, my parents snapped into action. They rented out my room. Rivers, I know I was an unwanted baby when I saw that my bath toy was a toaster. Sykes, I knew I was outspoken when I was a kid because whenever my parents had company coming over, they'd pay me to leave. Go see your grandmother. Get out of here. That was my first paying gig. Alan. I failed to make the chess team because of my height. When we played softball, I'd steal second base, feel guilty, and go back. Rivers. I don't exercise. If God had wanted me to bend over, he would have put diamonds on the floor. The first time I see a jogger smiling, I'll consider exercising. Alan. I was nauseous and tingly all over. I was either in love or had smallpox. Sex without love is a meaningless experience, but as far as meaningless experiences go, it's pretty damn good. I'm such a good lover because I practice a lot on my own. Sykes. Florida has so many strip clubs, they need to change their state flag to a brass pole. Men are dogs. Men are dogs. we got to stop it. Men are not dogs. Dogs are loyal. Alan. The food here is terrible and the portions are too small. Why does man kill? He kills for food. And not only food, frequently there must be a beverage. Rivers. It's obvious that women are smarter than men. Think about it. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Man's best friend is a dog. I hate weddings. Weddings are nothing more than catering with virgins. Sorry, in the old days it was virgins. Now it's baby mamas. I hate housework. You make the beds, you do the dishes, and six months later you have to start all over again. Alan. My wife was immature. I'd be at home in the bath and she'd come in and sink my boats. Sykes, you can't make a woman happy. That's like trying to cure a fatal disease. The goal is to treat the symptoms so you can comfortably live with the illness. Alan, I took a speed reading course and read War and Peace in 20 minutes. It involves Russia. I'm very proud of my gold pocket watch. My grandfather on his deathbed sold me this watch. What if everything is an illusion and nothing exists? In that case, I definitely overpaid for my carpet. Rivers, I blame my mother for my poor sex life. All she told me was, the man goes on top and the woman underneath. For three years, my husband and I slept in bunk beds. I have flabby thighs, but fortunately my stomach covers them. My best birth control now is just to leave the lights on. It's been so long since I've had sex, I've forgotten who ties up whom. I've had so much plastic surgery, when I die, they will donate my body to Tupperware. My husband wanted to be cremated. I told him I'd scatter his ashes at Neiman Marcus. That way I'd visit him every day. Sykes. I don't like the saying, keep your friends close and enemies closer. I want my enemy on a different planet. I'm easily annoyed. I would shoot people in my house that I invited over. I couldn't believe we elected an orangutan to front the country. I'm a black gay woman. I think the only way to make the GOP hate me more is if I sent a video of me rolling around on a pile of welfare checks. Alan. My luck is getting worse and worse. Last night I was mugged by a Quaker. Life is divided into the horrible and miserable. And it's all over much too soon. Sykes. L.A. is nothing but a bunch of driving, and I hate all that damn driving because it interferes with my drinking. Don't bother me while I'm eating or coming out of the crack house. Just let me get going. Rivers. All my friends are dying. That's why I always wear black. Alan. I'm not afraid to die. I just don't want to be there when it happens. On the plus side, death is one of the few things that can be done is easily lying down. Why are our days numbered and not, say, lettered? Rivers. I'd like to end on a serious note. Being Jewish has always been important to me. I now have 6M tattooed on the inside of my left arm. It's only a half inch, but every time anyone sees it, they're reminded of the 6 million who perished, and so am I. I say exactly what I think, and very often it's totally politically incorrect. I get, always, chastised for it. So it's not shtick, but I think I'm the one who says the emperor has no clothes. And lastly, Alan says, I also want to end on a serious note. I'm thankful for laughter, except when milk comes out of my nose. Oh, and I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve it through not dying. Oh, and one more thing. If my films make one more person miserable, I'll feel I have done my job. 
anyway, that's 20 minutes or whatever, uh, yeah, 25 minutes of uh, my attempts at humor. In any event, I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. Uh, and I certainly would welcome you checking out any of my 30 books. Maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, um, maybe uh, the book Light. It's a book, uh, it's a bunch of short, short stories that look at the brighter side of life. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.